Hi, I'm Dr. Heather Hirsch. Welcome back to my YouTube channel where we talk about all things perimenopause, menopause, and hormone replacement therapy. If you don't know me, I'm an internist. I'm also an author, podcaster, and YouTuber, and I love to make sure that you have all the information at your fingertips to make the best decisions for you during the menopause transition. And knowledge is power. So the more I can educate you on how your body changes because the changes are astronomical, the more prepared I hope you will feel. Today, I want to talk about risk factors for mood disturbances through the perimenopause to menopause transition. It is so common that women experience disruptions in their mood, be it anxiety or depression or things like worsening OCD or ADHD, brain fog, etc. And I wanna to talk to you about the risk factors that you could be aware of or look back on to connect the dots. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. Right off the bat, I think it's important to talk about the physiology and what's happening in our brain during the transition. So you may not know this, but it is super fascinating. Estrogen helps keep serotonin in the brain. Serotonin is the neurotransmitter that helps keep us feel happy and satisfied. So estrogen helps to upregulate serotonin and it also helps to keep serotonin in the brain by inhibiting the reuptake of serotonin. Therefore, when estrogen starts to decline in the perimenopause transition, we might have more depression. And depression can be anything from just low mood and the blues all the way to major depressive disorder. This is particularly important because I'm going to give you a shocking statistic that the leading cause of death in Caucasian women between age 45 to 55 is suicide. And this is so important because this is the exact time that we lose estrogen in the perimenopause to menopause transition. I do not want to take this lightly. In case you or a friend feel suicidal, definitely check out the National Suicide Prevention Hotline if needed. In perimenopause, estrogens are really volatile, so it's like jumping up and jumping down, and this absolutely can explain why some days you may feel on top of the world, wake up, and the next day feel like you never want to get out of bed. If this sounds like you, this really can be hormonally mediated. Progesterone, on the other hand, is our calming hormone, and progesterone starts to decline early in perimenopause. In fact, even earlier than estrogen does. Progesterone helps to increase the production of a neurotransmitter called GABA, and GABA really helps us feel nice and calm and relaxed. So because of the loss of progesterone, this can be one reason we start to develop anxiety, these intrusive thoughts, or you know, rumination, or insomnia, which is actually a combination. When you get into bed and all of a sudden you just cannot turn your brain off, that can be the result of low progesterone. So before we even get into the three risk factors, you might now be asking yourself, can hormone therapy help my mood? And this is a wonderful and really good question. Now, at The Collaborative, which is the private telemedicine practice that I founded, where we're available in almost all 50 states, we routinely talk to our patients about the fact that while hormone therapy is not FDA approved to treat low mood, clinically we do see an improvement in many of our patients. And many women are actually more interested in trialing hormone replacement therapy than maybe your more traditional medications like antidepressants or SSRIs or SNRIs. So it should be a shared decision-making conversation that you have with a knowledgeable provider. Now, studies on hormone therapy and mood definitely are mixed, but more recent studies absolutely can show that there are some positive benefits on mood with estrogen and reduction in anxiety when we add progesterone. So again, if you want to be seen at the collaborative, I'll give you more information on that at the end of the video or check the links in the description. On to the risk factors. Risk factor number one is a history of postpartum depression. Now, you might be wondering what's the difference between postpartum blues and postpartum depression, and really it's probably more of a time factor. Postpartum blues definitely is a couple of days or weeks after the baby's born. Of course, it's confounded by lack of sleep and just you know how your life is completely flipped upside down once you have a baby. Postpartum depression definitely takes on a different flavor of lasting weeks, but particularly two months with feelings of really low mood, loss of 
joy, feeling hopeless, down and depressed and prolonged periods of not being able to connect with your newborn. Now, what is happening physiologically is a big drop in your estrogen level, right? And we already learned at the beginning of this video that as we lose estrogen, that can decrease the amount of serotonin in our brain and hence increase the risk for depression. So if you experienced postpartum depression, this might mean that you are at increased risk for low mood as you go through the perimenopause to menopause transition and particularly in menopause where you don't make much if at all any estrogen after your ovaries pretty much retire. Now, I don't want this to necessarily worry you, but it does mean that maybe you wanna start talking to your doctor about connecting these dots and of course, start thinking about the safety and efficacy of hormone therapy for you because I personally have seen so many of my patients who struggle with postpartum depression also have depression in menopause and do well with some FDA approved bioidentical transdermal hormone therapy, of which there's many, many options. I actually have a great video here. If you don't even know where to start when it comes to hormone therapy, definitely start watching this one as it's going to break down all the different myths and facts between FDA approved um, and compounded, bioidentical, and all the different routes that you can use hormone therapy in. And of course, I've got tons of playlists over here on YouTube about all of that. Risk factor number two is a history of premenstrual dysphoric disorder or PMDD for short. In fact, I know I already told you I've got a video on HRT. I've got a great video on PMDD here, which breaks down a lot more about PMDD and how we can treat it. PMDD is essentially PMS, but on steroids. So PMS is not all in your head. It is actually physiologic. Right before a woman is going to have her period, her estrogen levels are declining. That can actually cause low mood. That can even cause migraines or headaches. It's not so much that estrogen causes the headaches, it's the drop and the change in estrogen that can cause headaches. The other thing that happens before our periods is progesterone is rising. That can make us retain water and feel bloated. It can cause all sorts of cravings for salt and then sugar, and that really can set you up for PMS. PMDD is when this is so clinically significant that patients feel extremely down, depressed, or as though they cannot function at work or at home. I have actually many patients diagnosed with PMDD. And here is sort of the bad news, but good for you to know is that perimenopause is PMDD on steroids. <laughs> now, what does that mean? Perimenopause is so much volatility and fluctuation in your hormones. And so having a history of PMDD can really make perimenopause a little bit of a beast. Again, the good news here is now you know and knowledge is power. So start talking to your doctor about what you can do. Now, this is not something that is unfortunately well taught in medical schools. If you need a really good clinician, again, at the collaborative, we are really, really experts in PMDD as well as treating uh, that through the perimenopause transition. The last risk factor is any history of depression or anxiety. And while you might say, well, isn't that kind of obvious? You know, what we see is that often through the perimenopause to menopause transition, because of the way the brain is just exhausted at all of these changes, it can trigger or worsen well-controlled anxiety and or depression or OCD or ADHD or brain fog or all of those. In fact, if you want a whole video on ADHD and brain fog, because I don't think we'll have time to cover that in this one, let me know in the comments below. But I have so many patients who tell me that their previous strategies for, let's say, anxiety or depression really are no longer working. Now, an example of this is maybe a patient who's already on an SSRI or low dose and she's incorporated meditation and morning walks and all the things that help to uh, make her feel better, but all of a sudden it's just not working and her doctor's saying, maybe we need to increase your you know, antidepressant medication. That could definitely be also your sign that it is actually just the hormones and not so much that all of a sudden the depression is worse and there's no reason why. Now, you could, of course, increase your antidepressant depressant medication. Of course, keep working on your lifestyle and your habits like healthy eating and movement and good sleep, etc. But it also could just be the hormonal fluctuation. And so again, this is where we use a lot of shared decision making with our patients to talk to them about either trying hormone therapy, maybe before they change the dose of a antidepressant or a medication for anxiety or OCD. 
If you made it to the end of this video, there is a bonus, which is peripartum depression. This is actually depression during pregnancy. I actually suffered with this. I'm a mom of three and it was very pronounced in my second pregnancy. This is actually when estrogen levels are really, really high. And this always reminds me that when we are prescribing hormone therapy, there's always a tipping point at which too much estrogen could actually hurt the mood. So we wanna be very careful with those doses. If you love this video, please consider subscribing to the channel that tells the YouTube algorithm that this is the best place for all things evidence-based. And truthfully, it really motivates me to keep making these amazing videos for you guys. If you don't know me again, I'm Dr. Heather Hirsch. I'm a board certified internist. I have uh, been fellowship trained in midlife and menopause. I have spent the last decade of my career focusing on midlife and menopause. I have an incredible course for clinicians, how to prescribe and manage hormone therapy with ease and confidence so you can rattle it off just like me, and a ton of courses, not just for clinicians, but for women as well. Check out the heatherhirschacademy.com. You can check that in the links below. If you want to be a patient, get premier expert care and use shared decision making to come up with the best type of treatment for you. Not only is this going to help you now, but it's going to help you for years and decades to come, definitely consider becoming a patient at the Hatha Hirsch MD Collaborative. Amazing clinicians in nearly all 50 states. We'd love to see you. Thank you guys so much. And I'll see you next week for a brand new video. Bye guys.